that is the Hazegel 124 scale type 2 combi. Hello, this is BJ from Hearns Hobbies and welcome again. I'm going to have an unboxing of this little gem here. This is the Hasegawa 1-24 scale combi, what do they call it? They call it a pickup. We call them utes over here. Ute is short for utility. Um, so it's basically a flat end version of a combi uh, bus, van, whatever you like to call it. It's been called a lot of different names over the years. Now this is known as the T2, which is a Type 2. That's simply because this is the second type of vehicle that Volkswagen ever made. The Type 1 was the Beetle. So it's quite significant. This is one of the earlier versions with a split window, which is quite cool. And I think the real ones of these are fetching quite a lot of money these days. It's also got those uh, funky little wheels. Looks very nice. Okay, let's open it up and have a closer look inside. Alright, so I've got some really nice box art there. As we expect from Hasegawa, it's always very nice and appealing. It's got this really interesting shape here, how they've cut off the back section to make this into a pickup. Still has all the, uh, uh, the features along the side, except you've got the fold down panels, like obviously the tailgate, and also the sides, they can fold down as well, and that's replicated in the kit. Alright, let's have a look inside. Alright, we've got quite a number of components in here. Bodywork is modern in white, which I really like. I prefer that because that allows you to paint any colour you like, including white. There's nothing like getting, say, a red plastic body shell and trying to paint it white. Just using uh, white primers and then coating it in red or pink primer uh, can be just troublesome. So that's great. Alright, so we've got quite a number of parts there in two bags or three bags if you include the body. So I'll pop that aside. Let's look at the body first. Okay, this is the most recognisable part. Okay, here we go. So you got it moulded in largely in one piece. You've got the backing section there obviously which will be separate and then cockpit details. You've got a large emblem which is moulded in place. Some people would probably like that moulded separately just so it's easier to, to paint. But it is quite pronounced. So painting that up silver or in a chrome colour won't be too difficult. This also helps them make the mould easier too, I think. Okay, you can see the sides there, they're all cut down. So this is where the panels will be when they're in the upright position. So you do have options of either building it, uh, the side panels up or fold it down. And you've got all your, your flat rear tray there. Okay, let's do a little bit of zoom so I can have a look at some of the finer details. So I'll get that focused properly. There we go. Well, I'm right focused there where you've got the, uh, the door opening lever. You see this, the lines here, the body lines where you've got the uh, two-tone. There's a Volks Volkswagen symbol. Various locating points here for the bumpers and indicators across here. There's your split window. Windshield wiper areas. You've got the, the rain gutters there. Real nice and sharp. It's a bit hard, I'm trying to get some shadows there because of white. It's a bit hard to show up. You've got, this is the hinging points. There will be different components to use here, whether you want it upright or not. Double the vents, and then there's the rear end. Okay, there is some slatting detail there as well on the tray. Nice and clean, all right. Let's move on to the next bag. This one here. All right, so I have some clear parts, chrome parts, three sets of chrome parts. Oh, there's no more clear parts, and some body components. Actually, there's a lot of chrome parts here. All right, so let's go with these panel parts. We've got the rear section here, so there's a rear vision window, you've got the tailgate, and then you've got your side panels for the side of the, what do you call that? I don't know, there must be a proper name for those. If you can tell me, that would be great. Let's go a bit closer, go tighter and we'll have a look at these details. Let's get that. There we go. 
There's some of the, uh, the ribbing detail on the back panel. Really like that. It's done really well, very sharp. Okay, here's these side panels. You can see the, the press marks in there as well. So they add, uh, add strength. And here is the opposing side. Now there are some mold injection pin marks here. But at least these are protruding type ones because there's two types here if you have them indented or protruding. The protruding ones here on a flat surface are easy to sand off. So it's not too much to deal with. Same with this panel here, there's a few there as well. Okay, so that's that. Let's have a closer look at these clear parts. Okay, there's the front windscreen and you can see the, the chrome underneath it it's fairly well polished but you could polish it a bit more you can see the reflection coming off there now I mean it's always very hard to get a perfectly polished clear part but this is not too bad I think for the era of car because I think with these sort of eras they never really had super smooth glass anyway but there is a little bit of distortion can't expect too much out of that I think they're still pretty good that's the sides And it's all more than one piece for your side glass and your windscreen. Okay, and then you have a single piece at the back. And that's for the rear windscreen. And obviously there's less distortion out of there because it's pretty much flat. Okay, clear bits. Okay, then we've got another set of clear bits. These ones are for your lights. Okay, so we've got probably tail lights, are they? Maybe? And we've got a variety of headlights here as well. Got these ones, which have got the, um, what do you call it, the Fresnel lens molded into them. And then these are clear covers. Okay. And then we're left with all these chrome parts. So that's just, we've got one, two, three, four sprues of chrome parts. We're going to this one. This is the bumper sprue. Okay, so there's a rear one, front one. You can see how the chroming is very, very clean. You can see the reflections coming through there. So it's unlike old styles of chrome. Sometimes that can be really rough, really bad ones have got dust particles in them. This one's clean, not a lot of uh, cleanup involved. And I'm hoping, and it probably is correct here, that these points where it's attached to the sprue should be on the bottom. So when you trim them off, if you touch them up with a little bit of, say, Molto pen or other chrome paint, it'll be really unnoticeable because it's going to be on the bottom. You'll be seeing it across the top there. Okay, from there we've got the rear vision mirrors. Okay, you can see that there's a little bit of a sink mark. I think that's going to be really difficult to get right out of the mold with a part that's this sort of shape. So. That's probably not ideal, but if you did want to get rid of that sink mark, all it'll mean is uh, you'll need to sand off that chrome, putty it up until it's smooth, and then apply chrome over the top. And because it's quite small, uh, a motto pen would be perfect for that as well, and it'll look very much the same as what we have here. Some small details here, you've got the rear vision internal mirror. There's probably some door handles there as well, I'm, I'm thinking. And there's a little bit of exhaust and probably some sort of sway bar, that long one here. And there's a part of the exhaust. Okay, from there, we've got quite a few light reflectors. Okay, so these, oh, these are hubcaps actually. These have got the VW on the end because I was wondering why it was only glossed on one side. This side has been glossed this side is still matte, so it's basically, this is the side you'll be viewing. Very nice and clean VW markings on there. Let's try and get that with the reflection. A couple of other little bits and pieces. Okay, so we've got this one, and there's this one, this is identical. Okay, so that makes it for hubcaps. And then here, this is where we've got our light reflectors.
Okay, I'm not too sure why there's the two types. Oh, actually, there's the uh, door handles on this. There's two here and two here. Might be different versions of the um, the reflectors. We'll see in the manual that'll explain everything there. Alright, so that's the chrome parts bag. And then we've got this big bag here with lots and lots of bits. Okay, so let me pop this over here. Let's go through one sprue at a time. Okay, so we've got different sets of bumpers here. So the, the other chrome bumpers I showed you, they're not actually part of this kit on the box art. This one actually has these bull bar type arrangement. So this is the ones that you use on this kit if you want to do exactly the same, or you've got the option of the chrome ones as well. We've got this rear shelf here. I'm not sure if that's actually used in this kit. This looks like a backing panel behind the, uh, uh, the cockpit. So a few little options there. Okay, so there's that one. And then we've got a selection of black parts. This is the transmission tunnel. You've got the front suspension. Disc brakes. Would they be discs or drums? I don't know. They're round hubs. Some more arms there. So you've got the steering rods as well. Here's a rear axle. They're all pretty basic. I'm going to do a close up on these. I don't know if we really see much more. That's the front suspension struts. Transmission tunnel. There's your hubs. And these are probably um, under chassis protectors, I'm thinking, around the front end. More arms, steering rod, and that's a rear axle with probably some drums attached to it. Some shocks. Okay, from there we've got a couple of bits here. Okay, these are specific to the pickup. So these are probably, um, I think, either metal or wooden rails that you'll put inside the tray. Have a close look at one of these. There we go. Okay, so you just see the shape of those rails. So there's a bit of the, the stuff on the rear tray that you'll be able to put all your luggage or goods on and you'll be able to slide it across without it feeling any drag. Little bits and pieces here. These are probably hinges I think for the optional either open or closed side panels. It's got those there as well. Okay so there you go, you've got two identical sprues there. Then we have some internal components. Don't know where these go. They're probably near the door, I'm guessing, over the, um, the front wheel arches. You've got the steering wheel, gear shift knob, and registration plate covers. Not a great deal to look at here. Fairly basic pieces. But there's your internal parts, I think. Got a few washer type things. There's the steering wheel. And then a variety of number plates. Got our wheels over here. Two sprue, exactly the same. So these are white type. And then they've got the hubcaps that go over the top. Have a closer look at how nice these are. Okay, so you've got a nice pressed metal look. Very, very skinny wheels. There's the other side. Nicely molded, no, no flash at all on those. And then we've got a bag of tyres, so rubber type tyres with some fine tread. You can see them, they're very, very thin, as you expect from these old cars. Very much like rubber bands, but they're soft, rubbery, and then there's some poly caps in there as well. So that's the capture system for the wheels so they can still rotate. So we can see some of the tread pattern there. You just see that zigzag tread pattern. 
that's all the way around. And always with these sort of rubber tires, these are generally got two parts of the mold they go together like this, so there will be a mold line down the center. That's easier uh, or very easy to remove just with some coarse sandpaper. So like you start with a 240 grit, if that's a bit rough, then you can go to 320 or 400, but they'll clean it up very nicely. And it does look like a, a worn tire as well that's been used. All right, from there, we've got our final piece of plastic, which is the floor pan. Okay, so there's probably some components there which are suited for the original truck. Because you've got seats here, which you won't be using. There's a dashboard. You've got half of an engine here. So it's not the full engine itself, but you've got the lower parts of it. And there's another rear panel, which I doubt you'll be using. But most of the pickup will be sitting across the top here. Now it's got some nice surface detail. You can see those ribs there. So this is a bit hard to focus on. There we go. Nice ribs. Unfortunately you won't be seeing any of that. So the engine would be, where's the engine sitting? The engine will be sitting under here. Okay so you won't see any of this detail but you've got your driver's compartment here. Dashboard quite nice. It does only give you one dashboard so this would be left hand drive and then there's the under part of the engine. Not a lot but you won't see much anyway. Okay so that are all the components for the plastic. What we do have left is we have some decals. So decals are quite simple but they've got all the uh, the pinstripes that separate the two-tone. And then you've got your options of different registration plates. Got the big V section there for the separation for the front end. Oh, there you go. So you've got a actual decal for the big VW for the front. Either you use this or we can use a chrome pen, either way, depends what you're more comfortable with. There you go. Okay, so let's go and have a look at the manual here. So we've got the pretty standard looking Haskell manual. You've got a description, a little bit of history, paint charts here, which show the GSI paint codes. And as we get into here, Step six, or oh, step one, I should say. We're building up the, uh, these are the front suspension. Drops into the floor pan. We've got the engine getting painted up and dropped into the back. These are your seats. Oh, actually, you do use these seats. I was always thinking about separate seats, but these cars of this era had a bench seat. You've got the uh, gear shift going in. You've got all your wheels, tires, clear going into the bodywork. Here's a rear panel with the rear window. You've got uh, all your dashboard going together. That's all glued into the bodywork. You start working on the tray. So here's the rails that I was talking about. So you've got 10 of those to install along here. And at this point where you've got section eight, you have your choices of either the closed side panels or open side panels. So they do have different fittings for the hinges. If you're really clever, you could probably make new hinges and have them workable. Okay, so from there, getting towards the end, you've got the body getting fitted onto the floor pan, rear bumpers, rear lights going in. These are all the finer details now. So you've got your, um, your headlight buckets, rear vision mirrors, uh, wind, rear vision mirrors, I should say. You've got windshield wipers, bit ahead of myself, aren't I? And then over here we've got a antenna. And then you finally end up with the decal chart and also the painting guide. You've got your legend of all the parts here and anything that's been greyed out, like these ones here, these are the components that you might be using for this particular version of the kit. And then there's something pretty funny here. You've got a little template for some boxes. Okay, so you just fold that up and you drop it in the back and it's like it's fully loaded with some Hazagawa kits. So there we go. 
So that is my open box review of the new Hasgela Type 2 Volkswagen Combi Pickup Ute. It's a really nice kit. It's really um, quite nostalgic and I remember helping a friend get one of these locally in Australia and shipping it back to Japan. Very unique looking car. So there you go. That is the Hasgela 124 scale Type 2 Combi Ute. So thanks for watching.